All right, let's continue with this example involving the quadratic function s of t equals 64 minus 16 times t minus 1 squared. So this gives the height of a basketball in feet as a function of time in seconds. And in this part, we're asked to just calculate a bunch of average velocities or average rates of change. Uh, and then we'll look and see if we can spot any patterns, anything interesting happening in our table. So mostly I want to use this part to just show you a little bit of technology stuff in case you're not familiar with it. So again, average velocity, this AV, uh, we won't use that notation a ton this quarter. It's just kind of a temporary one. But basically, it's asking for average rate of change from 0.4 to 0.8. So we'll plug in 0.8 and plug in 0.4 and subtract, and then we'll divide by 0.8 minus 0.4. And this is where technology comes in. So feel free to use whatever calculator you have handy. You'll want to be able to crunch something like this in class when you may not be allowed to use Desmos. Um, but I would like to show you Desmos right now because it is wonderfully handy to use as you're working through homework. So if you'd like to follow along, head to desmos.com, D-E-S-M-O-S. And when you get here, you can click graphing calculator. I will point out that under math tools, there's also scientific calculator, four function calculator, I don't actually know, that's maybe a really basic calculator and some other tools, so feel free to play around. Um, but we'll be using the graphing calculator and you can do anything you would do in the scientific calculator here. So let's just start by getting a graph. So I'm gonna type in y equals 64 minus 16 times t minus one squared. Um, I'm just typing all that with my keyboard to get the square. I do shift six to get the little carrot, but I will point out that there is a keyboard, like a built-in keyboard you can use to get exponents, and there's your parentheses, use division for a fraction bar, there's a functions menu if you need trig functions or something like that. So just play around with everything. It's really powerful and nice. Okay, so uh, let's just get the graph to look like what we started with. So I'm going to go over here to graph settings. And in that you can set your window, you can turn grids and grid lines off and on. Our window was zero to three. I'm going to go a little further than that just so that uh, everything's easy to see in my, my window here. So I'm going to go negative 0.5 to 3.5. Step is just how far apart your labeled tick marks are. So right now the step is 0.5. We could change it to 1 and notice that now the horizontal tick marks are 1, but I'll just leave it at 0.5. Uh, for the y-axis, it was 0 to 64. So again, I'm going to give it just a little bit more room than that. I'm going to go negative 5 to 70. And that's a step of 10, so that looks good. So now we're looking at uh, pretty much what was on the first part of this example. Our goal here was actually to calculate the average rate of change from 0.4 to 0.8. So to use this as a scientific calculator, you can just type in whatever calculation you want to do. And notice that down here on the bottom, it'll tell you your answer. Uh, also note that you can copy and paste in here. So I'm going to control C and then I just click down or enter and control V. Uh, and you can change that to a point four. You could change it right here as well, but if you want to see both answers, uh, that's a nice way to do it. Uh, fraction bar, you can just hit the, um, I don't know, what is that, backslash? Or like I said, you can do division in your um, keyboard right down here. We are trying to do uh, average rate of change. So let's take the 63 point, oops, point three six minus the 58.24, wow, all sorts of typos. Okay, and we're gonna divide by 0.8 minus 0.4. Note that we could absolutely flip-flop the order of the top two numbers, but if we do that, we'd have to flip-flop the order in the bottom as well. X, Y pairs should line up right up and down from each other. So I'm getting that that first average rate of change I was looking for is 12.8. So if we come back in here, this is a 12.8. Okay, and then we just wanna go back in and do more calculations, but I'm going to show you some even nicer tricks for getting Desmos to do this for you. So back in my Desmos window,
window, Desmos actually understands function notation. And it's pretty good about using most variables, but if you're having some trouble, uh, you can default back to F for a function name, X for your input variable. So it's clearly fine with S and T, but there are some I know that mess it up a little bit. So down here, if we were going to do that same calculation, we type in S of 0.8, and there's that same 63.36. We could type in S of 0.4 and get that same 58.24. Uh, I think even more exciting than that, we could actually just fill it all in right here. 0.8 minus S of 0.4 over 0.8 minus 0.4. And there's our 12.8, and we don't even need these intermediate steps. So let's start using that. Our next slope was supposed to be 0.7 to 0.8. So let's go ahead and change the 0.4 to 0.7, and we get exactly 8. The next one after that, I'm just going to copy and paste again, was supposed to be 0.79 to 0.8. So there's 0.79 to 0.8. And let's go ahead and fill those in. So our slopes were 8 and 6.56. All right. On the other side, we're supposed to do something really similar. Um, so we want to see the slope from 0 0.8 to 1.2, from 0.8 to 0.9, and from 0.8 to 0.81. And I'm going to work my way in in that order because what we're trying to see here is as our uh, second point moves closer and closer to 0.8, what is happening to our slope? So we're kind of having a work in towards the middle pattern going on here. Okay, so if I go back into Desmos, um, I have a... 0.8 to 1.2. The way we normally write out that formula, the 0.8 and the 1.2 would be flip-flopped. But as I said, it doesn't actually matter. Um, and this is interesting. I get a zero for this one. So if we look at the graph and try and figure out what's going on here, we'll do it this way. X equals uh, 0.8 to X equals 1.2. Notice that these two points are exactly the same y value. So it's true that the average rate of change between those points is zero. Or if you imagine here drawing a secant line, because that's what we're doing, a slope of secant line here, uh, we would absolutely get the slope of our secant line is zero. So that is true. So there's 0 0.8 to 1.2. The next one we were supposed to do is 0 0.8 to 0.9. So we get slope of 0, slope of 4.8, and then let's do one more. Um, a little bit closer even oops, is 0 0.8 to 0 0.81, and we get a slope of 6.24. So as we're moving our point in this way, our slopes are actually getting a little bit smaller. So if I go back into my table, let's see if I can remember, 0, 4.8, 6.24. This is what I'm getting, and I'm interested in what's going on in the middle. I'm getting slopes of 6.56 and 6.24. It does appear that this is approaching one value. Okay, so we're going to dig into this a little bit deeper, but I'm going to stop there and do that in another video.